Um, just to give you a brief idea, I'm going to be, this Cloud Suite talk is going to be very high level, or mainly Cloud Suite is a collection of software gathered by us. The software are not designed by us, but we just put them together, we just made them easily accessible and deployable so that you can use them and benchmark your systems and use them for server design. Um, the goal of Cloud Suite is to touch on various aspects of server design and each workload will show you or will, try, uh, will let you exercise different parts of, a, of, of your design. And uh, we also provide end-to-end -end performance metrics with Cloud Suite. So just to, to give a brief architecture overview for servers, you're talking about many core processors, multiple memory and chip controllers, we have a complex interconnects, custom peripherals like GPUs, TPUs, and we have also complex cache hierarchies. Moving on from here to Cloud Suite workload overviews, we try to have, we, we have multi-threaded, multi-processors. Our applications are multi-tiered, they're quite complex. They're data intensive, they exercise OS heavily, and also they exercise network I.O. Um, so far we have eight workloads. These softwares consist of, as you can see, um, we have uh, data analytics, graph analytics, in-memory analytics, web search, media streaming, web serving, data caching, and data serving. And these are, as you can see, consist of different software. Um, they come with their own licensing terms, each of the, uh, each of the uh, software used by, uh, by these companies. So we just put them together, as I said. Um, just to give you a brief history, we started in 2012 with the paper describing Cloud Suite 1 and how we need a representative server software. And in Cloud Suite 2, we added two more. In Cloud Suite 3, we added four additional workloads. And coming up, you'll be adding one more quite soon for Cloud Suite, either version 4 or 3.5. Um, to kind of um, be able to represent both sides of uh, analytical and both online, uh, offline and on, uh, online benchmarks, we have three uh, uh, offline benchmarks and five online benchmarks. I'll explain what they are. Basically, offline benchmarks are analytic benchmarks. They do a task and they report the completion time. That's about it. So you want to run an ML algorithm over a large data set. You do that and you report it back to your master. Uh, whereas, uh, yeah, so talking about uh, data analytics, starting with the data analytics benchmarks, it's basically a taste, text classification uh, benchmark, uh, kind of benchmark. So you basically, what you do, you have your, uh, your user giving the master the uh, model, the ML model, and the users get the, or the nodes get the data from uh, Wikipedia, crawling Wikipedia, you get the master to send them the, the models. You, uh, you do your classification, you report back to master, and uh, your performance metric is your completion time. For the next benchmark, it's uh, in memory analytics. And keep in mind, the software chosen, each, each of the benchmarks has a reason behind it. So if you want, I can explain there later. And memory benchmark uh, more or less uses the same, but just tries to uh, focus on memory. So we're using here Apache MLlib for uh, running uh, a recommendation system. So basically the same thing. We have a master sending the models and then the workers do their uh, train, train analyze models and evaluate them on a validation set. And uh, yeah, so and then the performance metric again here is completion time. Um, moving on to graph analytics. Here we use a GraphX, and uh, we use a Twitter user graph as our data set, and we measure the influence of a particular user. So you have uh, the Twitter user graph, and you have your master. Again, you, uh, you distribute the graph across the worker nodes, run your page, page ranking algorithm on the graph, and then you get the influence, uh, uh, yeah, the influence rankings back, and then you're Again, performance metric completion. These are the offline benchmarks. They do not re rely on reporting back to user as soon as possible. So you just want to do some analytics. Whereas moving on to online benchmarks, this is where you have a user waiting for 
we're waiting for the server. So they're starting with data caching. Uh, we operate on a large data set. So throughput is important. Latency also, tail latency and latency are really important here. And we want to, the target is to achieve a QoS quality of service. Um, so they, they, they differ, the, the QoS differs based on the benchmark, but basically, yeah, so we, need, we want to focus on latency here. Um, so we have yeah, latency sensitive apps, so we have to do, uh, we have to do a lot of work really fast, but also uh, report back to the user in a comprehensible time. So you have a, uh, your worker nodes, your user uh, wants to look, for, look up it. Uh, so you have cached all of these uh, the tweets based on, a, it on this, based on our data set. And the user requests a tweet, and uh, uh, the latency is how many tweets you can get back within a time frame. So that's your percentile latency. So this, in here, we use a memcached software to cache the data in memory. And uh, that, that's basically, and it's very a simple benchmark, but it can show a lot. You can, you can exercise your memory bandwidth here, for example. Moving on to data serving. Again, here, we, uh, it's a bit different. We're using uh, Apache Cassandra here for uh, accessing disk as well. So um, here, we have users connected to the front end, request, uh, trying to read or write to the, uh, inside a database. So you can see that uh, the software layers and how they are constructed. Basically, user, for example, in here, this is uh, basically a, a book, booking service. So you check rates first, and then you make a reservation. So this is your write re read request, and then later on you have a write request. Um, yeah, and then your benchmark is your data serving benchmark over there. Um, and we use for the client, for the, uh, for the request emulator, we use uh, YCSP. And uh, yeah, you can tweak it and uh, set your, uh, what, what your desired parameters, and then that way you can uh, exercise your backend. Um, yeah, so there are two choices. You can either use Apache HBase or Cassandra, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, moving to media streaming, which is the, one of the very popular um, applications these days. People use Netflix, YouTube on a daily basis. As you can see, account for 70% of total network. So if you can move uh, quite percentage there, so you, you, if you can improve a bit there, it, it's, it's going to be going a long road. Um, yeah, so basically this is again, it's a very clear, uh, pipe, uh, clear uh, view. So basically user establishes connection and then uh, requests to play to the, to the media server, media server access the data, the backend, brings it back to the user, and then a user, when, when they wanna leave, they, they tear down the, the connection and everything else. Um, here again, the, the connection is HTTP connection. Um, we use a video perf client based on HTTP perf. And uh, yeah, we also use the um, yeah, different uh, video lens and uh, qualities to, to have all range, uh, uh, a good range for our uh, yeah, for our benchmark. For the server, we use an Nginx server. Um, yeah, we can also the, the, we can also extend or reduce the length of video. We can use different qualities. Performance metric here is uh, uh, yeah streaming bandwidth. Uh, moving on to web search. Um, this again is a very representative benchmark for a daily uh, user. So we, this is a bit more, uh, I guess, complex software stack. We basically have our user. It sends a query to the server or the, 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 the entry point, the aggregator. The aggregator sends the request to two, a minimum of two nodes, the index server node and the inverted index server node um, basically gets back where the data is located. And then based on, the, based on uh, some factors, for example, the page size or how many, how many queries to send back, the user sends, it says, okay, give me a snippet two to 10. And then the, the aggregator gets it back and it gives it back to the user. We use a fab and traffic generator here to just run traffic. And uh, we can tweak it to differentiate within the number of uh, requests. 
and uh, yeah so and then also yeah we can use we can we are very flexible in how to redefine the software and how to run it and for the back we are we use apache Sol search engine for the isns um yeah and then the data set the is already aggregated there and here again the performance metric is search ops per second and so this is, this provides us with a latency and the last but not least is the web serving used also again on a daily basis by a lot of uh, inner based services and various technologies behind so such as html php and so on um, here again we have a client connected to a web server access it, that, that web server tries to find the data on the cache server and if not found then you, you look it up in the database we have a, again fab on traffic generator for client emulation um, yeah pre-configured transition matrix and then for the web server we have nginx application server is php um, and we server social network engine here I'll, uh, for the caching server again you utilize mmcached and the database is MySQL. Again, the same performance metric. These, all these online services rely on uh, latency for QoS. Um, basically, that's it. Uh, we are coming up with the, we have just updated our software stack this summer. So everything is running the latest version and uh, um, it's, we, we, we try to promote Cloud Suite to be used for server design because we think it's the proper software to be used. And together you can also use it with QFlex, which is the full system emulator or a simulator. And uh, yeah, you can come up with new designs that are more targeted for server world. Thank you. Thank you.